All right, guys, we'll start. Right? Yesterday we saw what? Law of demand and the first chapter we revised. Now we are going to see utility chapter, then supply chapter. Right? In this video. So, utility. Right? This is where we have studied certain concepts here. We'll go one by one. What is it? Right? We studied wants. What is wants? What is wants? They are nothing but desires of human beings. Right? There is something called urgent wants or not so urgent wants, right? And some characteristics we studied like wants are unlimited, differ in intensity, right? Satiable, this is a new word which you learned. What is satiable? Satisfiable. That is wants can be satisfied, right? They are competitive, complementary, subjective, right? And vary time, place and person, right? Then we classified wants into three types. One is necessary, comfort and luxurious. Right? We will go into all these three. But necessary goods were further classified into three. Right? Necessary wants were, necessary wants were further classified into further three. What are they? Necessary for life, necessary for efficiency and conventional necessary. What is necessary for life? For living itself, you need to satisfy these. If you don't satisfy these, you can't live. Right? That is necessary for life. Minimum psychological needs. Like some food. Right? Water. These are minimum needs for living. Then there is something called necessary for efficiency. Right? Living is something, but efficiently you have to do your work. You should be a little bit energetic. Right? For that, certain wants are there. That we call it as necessary for efficiency, right? Something more than necessary for life. And then there is conventional necessaries. These are not actually necessary for living. But because of our practice, because of our habits, it has become necessary. For example, smoking, right? You, your friend will say, give up. No, it is necessary for me, right? Those are all conventional necessaries. Because of our pressure of habits or social customs, it has become necessaries, right? Then comforts. What does comfort wants means? Which makes our life comfortable, right? They are a little bit urge, less urgent than necessaries. Then luxurious. The word wants which are superfluous and expensive. They are not necessary for living or they are a little bit expensive and superfluous, right? They are not essential for living right now again you cannot take a product and it uh, you cannot take a need and say it will this will be under luxurious wants this will be under comfortable because for one one human beings it will differ right please understand that then we saw utility what is utility like we measure weight in kg we measure distance in kilometer we measure satisfaction in utility right utility in other word is nothing but the want satisfying power right the power a, ut a product might have to satisfy your want we measure in utility right it is not actual satisfaction right it is the expected satisfaction so expected satisfaction means for everything you can have expectation right done and it is very subjective and or to say it varies from person to person, right? And certain things about utility, right? Utility, a commodity will have because it's expected satisfaction. You need not consume it to have, uh, what to say, utility need not be needed to have consumed. You need not have a product consumed to have utility. Even if you see it, you can itself say, I will get 50 utility from this product, right? Little bit arbitrary, but that's how this concept works. So, utility is not equivalent to usefulness. Do not consider usefulness. How useful a product is or not useful a product is. Even a product which is not useful might have utility. Right? And as well as a harmful thing. Right? An harmful thing also can have utility. So, for example, a cigarette. It can be harmful for you. But still, it will give you utility, right? So, that is why they say utility is an ethically neutral concept, right? They don't, they, uh, utility does not talk about ethics. Every item will have utility, right? Then, now, 
we we learned what is equilibrium right what is equilibrium a state of balance where all this uh, balances are equal right or in such a way that you do not want to move from that particular position you are little bit settled you are in consumer terms we studied something called consumer equilibrium that is he is spending his money in such a way that he is getting maximum satisfaction in what is consumer uh, equilibrium he is spending his money or his income in such a way that he is getting maximum satisfaction then we call the consumer is in equilibrium right now to find how to achieve equilibrium how a consumer achieves equilibrium there are two methods one is what is it cardinal one is ordinal right one is cardinal method one is ordinal method what is cardinal method says you can measure utility right you can measure utility whereas ordinal says you cannot measure and all you can give preferences or you can give ranks right that is what they said and in both the methods how are they going to achieve maximum satisfaction with their given income is what we are going to study as a concept right for cardinal utility you study in marginal utility analysis propounded by marshall and for hicks and harrens proposed ordinal approach that is indifference curve right this is what we are going to study going forward right so this is what it is yes these are the two theories right so under cardinal approach there are two further theories law of diminishing marginal utility and law of equi marginal utility what is equi marginal utility on we'll revise when we come to that particular chapter or concept then cardinal utility analysis what is cardinal utility analysis means it implies that utility can be measured cardinal numbers can be assigned like 1 2 3 4 right and you unit of measure of utility is called as utils right utils it's like kg mg and all is there no same thing utils we call it as right it can be quantitatively expressed quantitatively expressed means it can be expressed in numbers that is what they are saying right if you can express then you can compare 10 is greater than 9 that is what they are trying to say express which commodity which gives a higher utility by how much right and utilities from different units can be summed up what does that means you can add see from one product i am getting 9 a 10 another product i am getting 8 so what is the total utility 18 i can sum it up that is what they are trying to say so sir how do i measure it i measure it in utils but what is the measuring rod i give it as money is the measuring rod so what they are saying is 1 rupee is equal to 1 utils right because that is where human beings try to understand right that is why the phrase it's worth it right it worth 200 rupees much on this movie was right no it's not worth it that is where this concept they said okay money connecting the money is a easy way of measuring this are we clear done now what are the some assumptions of marginal utility analysis that is a consumer should be rational second cardinal measure of utility third constancy of marginal utility of money what is constancy of marginal utility of money means i told you rupee value will never change the value you get the utility you get from rupees will never change that is if you get 1 rupee also you get after 10000 rupees you get 1 rupee the first rupee which you get the satisfaction ha ah, 1 rupee right after 10000 you get 1 rupee that 1 rupee satisfaction should be equivalent to the first 1 rupee also okay that is 10000 1 rupee should be equivalent to the first rupee it should always same but in reality it is not the same because after earning so much you will be like ah, leave it i am not so money minded and all they say right that is what it is hypothesis of independent utility what does this mean so what they are trying to say is a product should be measured independently right you should not combine let's say you go to a, a starbucks coffee right why do you go to a starbucks coffee because of the ambience 
right the sugar in the coffee is right they write your name right in the coffee cup that's all is giving kick that is why you are ready to pay 180 and your satisfaction but in this what they are trying to say is no if you're going to drink coffee you're going to see utility see coffee utility only don't see the ambience and other things which is also a little bit some assumptions are there yeah these are the assumptions of this particular thing yeah done then if so we understood total marginal utility and marginal utility very important what is total utility total utility is nothing but total satisfaction from a product right sum of all the marginal utilities you consume right let us say i consume one apple i get 10 another apple i consume i get 8 so what is the total satisfaction i am getting 18 that is what what to say total utility means right tu is equal to mu plus mu plus mu1 plus mu2 plus mu n right what is marginal utility means it is the additional satisfaction which i am getting from consuming an additional unit right when i consume the first unit of apple i got how much 10 right so what is the mu of 1 mu1 is 10 second apple i got right i consumed i got 8 right what is the additional satisfaction i'm getting from another apple is 8 right so so individually you have to see sometimes questions can be given first product which i got i got a total utility of 10 second product i consumed i got a total utility of 18 what is the marginal uh, utility of the second product 8 that is how did you find mun minus mun minus 1 that is 8 right this is what the concept is then we saw a law in this law of marginal diminishing law of diminishing marginal utility or we also call it as law of d m u right who propounded it marshall what did he say what did he say he said sir as you keep on consuming the same unit again and again the extra satisfaction you get that is the mu you get will keep on declining right you will keep on declining right that is what he said the additional benefit which a person derives from a given increase in stock of that diminishes with every increase in the stock he has already had are we clear right we saw chicken leg piece and all right ate one chicken leg piece very good second chicken leg piece was good third leg piece was huh, it was for the sake of eating it right the satisfaction kept on falling right from the extra chicken leg piece done so but there are certain exceptions to it that is money music and hobbies right that is also been told i want you to do this particular sum just for you just do it quickly what should be the total utility and marginal utility i want you guys to do this particular sum so that we are all in Donna, yeah, how did you find the total utility here? That is 30 plus 20, right? You should be getting 50 here. What is the answer here? Right, 65 minus 50, that is 15. Here, what should be the answer? 75 plus 8, 
that should be 83 right then 93 plus 3 is 96 98 minus 4 is 90 right this should be your answers done so now you plot that into a graph and we studied economics is here is more of analyzing how the graph looks and telling the relationship we found lot of relationships and we are going one by one what are the relationship we found between what to say tu and mu let us see right when tu rises mu is positive but it is at a diminishing rate right what they are saying tu will rise but it will rise at a diminishing rate because why mu is diminishing right mu will keep on diminishing throughout right when mu is zero tu is at maximum right when mu is zero here when it's cutting it tu is at maximum you see here mu is zero tu is at maximum right this we call it as what saturation point this is called as saturation point when mu is negative tu is diminishing right and mu is the rate of change of tu or the slope of tu why tu is nothing but made up of mu so the slope of tu should be mu only right mu can be positive zero and negative where tu normally will be positive only yes limitation of ma diminishing marginal utility of law what are the limitations homogeneous units that is you should consume the same type of units one second guys It is too much hitting. Sometimes my I'm getting dizzy. Go to see about this. Let's see. Anyway. I got dizzy, that's why. Stale la kono sutich. Done. So homogeneous units. What does that mean? that goods units should be identical right let us say you buy you eat a chicken leg piece right same second uh, leg piece means second piece also should be leg piece only it should not be neck piece or breast piece or some other piece and it should look the same taste the same everything should be identical right which is a little bit difficult as you know right that but these are the assumptions which are there but because of that assumption it looks a little bit limitations we call it as standard units of consumption right now when you are drinking water how do you drink water one liter of water or one cup of water right so someone should not say i'll put one drop of water and i expect the law of diminishing marginal utility to work right because one drop of water and all is not a standard unit right then continuous consumption should be there you should keep on be eating it there should not be gap it's not like morning you eat say, then evening you eat you should be continuously eating it and the law fails in case of prestigious goods right as gold if they say uh, second second go kg of gold if they give you you'll be like no 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 letter utility no you will be more than happy to get it right case of related goods i told you independent goods are ignored here right complimentary i took the starbucks example right that is all ignored here it is based on some un un unrealistic assumption what is the unrealistic assumption money can i mean utility uh, utility can be measured in terms of money and all little bit unrealistic assumption 
right done uh, now we will move on to how using this marginal utility and total utility how can we measure the you consumer equilibrium right now mu i told you you measure it in terms of what in terms of money correct you are measuring mu in terms of money now mu is 10 rupees let us say mu is 10 rupees you are getting a satisfaction worth how much 10 rupees now how much will you be willing to pay for this you will be willing maximum maximum you will be willing to pay till 10 rupees you will not pay 12 rupees or 10 11 rupees because you will not get why would you pay something 12 rupees and get only 10 rupees satisfaction that is not a wise way of spending the money right so that is why they say you will attain consumer equilibrium when mu is equal to market price right market price let us see law of diminishing marginal utility help us to understand how consumer reaches the equilibrium in case of single good we are seeing only in single good this is an assumption only only one good is there it states that as quantity of goods with the consumer increases the marginal utility of the good decreases we know as i consume more mu will keep on decreasing in other words mu curve is a downward sloping curve done now the consumer will go on buying till the marginal utility of the money is equivalent to market price in other words the consumer will be in equilibrium in respect of quantity of goods when mu is equivalent to price therefore he is in maximum satisfaction so this is why we studied yesterday also rational bail of demand we studied right mu is equal to price are we clear any questions in this online any questions in this face is okay done now what is this equi marginal utility now we saw how a consumer attains in one unit if he spends his entire money on one unit that is this is what marginal diminishing marginal utility taught us but in reality does a consumer spend only on one unit or more than one more than one right here they are talking about two units okay if he spends more than on one or two units right done so that we call it as equi marginal utility we call it as equi marginal utility so when will he achieve equi marginal utility when mu x slash px is equal to mu y slash py when this condition is satisfied he will what to say achieve his utility i gave you example right let us say product a product b is there let's say he has 10 rupees a uh, product a is going to give him a 25 utility first product which is going to give him is 25 utility product b is going to give him only 20 utility which product will you consume you will consume 25 utility giving product because that is giving your 10 rupees is worth more here correct ah? another 10 rupees comes let us say you consume the first product second product which is going to get right is of a is going to give you only 18 utilities what will you spend that money on you will spend it on b now right you will spend it on b because that is giving you more utility so you will keep on balancing in such a way that your last rupee which you are going to spend will be in such a way that mu which you get will be almost equal from each both the products it will balance in such a way that you will get the maximum satisfaction from these products right that is mu x slash px will be equivalent to mu y by p y at the end of the day are we clear this is the concept between the equi marginal utility then there was a side after this concept was written there was a side concept also which was there what is that the side concept is consumer surplus what is this consumer surplus sir a product i get satisfaction is 100 but i paid only 50 or let us say 25 i paid rupees only 25 but how much satisfaction i got 100 rupees worth so i am willing to pay 100 rupees but i got i paid only 25 so 
what is the excess satisfaction i got 75 we call this as consumer surplus right we call it as consumer surplus what the consumer is ready to pay minus what he actually paid or it is the excess price with the consumer is willing to pay rather than to go with a thing over which he actually pays right so the extra utility or extra surplus we call it as consumer surplus right who propounded it this also our alfred much only proposed right now some limitations of consumer surplus what are this some limitations consumer surplus cannot be measured uh, precisely reason being is utility itself cannot be measured properly how can you measure consumer surplus is what they are trying to say and very very important this one consumer surplus for necessary goods is infinity right for water if i you if only you can get water from me let's say i charge 1 lakh also you will pay because without water you will what margaya right so you will pay whatever it is your willingness will be infinity that is what they are trying to say consumer surplus derived from a commodity is affected by availability of the substitute more the substitute right depending upon the substitute the consumer surplus will get affected right utility is measured in terms of money which is kind of not acceptable right in reality where all we use consumer surplus these are the areas where you normally use your consumer surplus right our auto guys will use it right our managers will help in price discrimination right and even it will use be used for finance minister right who is ready to pay more tax based on that and all it has been used just read through it mm, that should be more than enough here now we still we saw cardinal utility concept done of cardinal utility any questions here any questions here Yeah, not sure. Now, in difference curve analysis, we use ordinal utility approach. What is this ordinal utility approach? We discussed it is based on consumer preferences, right? Assumptions are this consumer is rational, is capable of ranking the goods accordingly, right? And consumer choices are assumed to be transitive. What is transitive means? Let us say A, B, C. Someone likes A is preferred more than B. Right? And B is preferred more than C. Then he will prefer A more than C. We call this property as transitive. Right? Done. So, in this consumer choice should be transitive. He should not be like, no, no. I like C more than should not happen this is not transitive okay done and if a combination of a has more commodities than combination b then a must be preferred to b let us say there are four apples in combination a and there are excuse me there are three apples in combination b you should not say i like b only three apples right more the commodities means a consumer should prefer that only that is the assumption right so more the commodity in a combination better the uh, what to say combination is right then we saw something called indifference curve or ic right indifference curve what is indifference curve it represents combination of two goods it represents a combination of two goods which gives the same level of satisfaction to the consumer which gives the same level of satisfaction to the consumer 
right so for example one cloth of uh, one food and 12 clothes will give the same satisfaction of two food and six clothes right so whatever the combination be whatever the combination be the consumers indifferent indifferent means what he's not bothered you because it is all giving him the same level of satisfaction if everything is giving the same level of satisfaction he is indifferent that is why it is called as indifference curve right done all the combination provide the same level of satisfaction and the consumer prefers them equally and does not mind the combination which he gets the if the consumer equally prefers two product bundle then the consumer is indifferent between the product bundle indifference curve is also called as iso utility curve or equal utility curve please always remember these things these words are a little bit important right then this is how you plot your indifference curve all these what to say combinations right which you had you plot in a graph and it's a downward sloping curve some properties anyway we are going to see now this is one indifference curve right but there can be many indifference curve right let us say this gives you a happiness of this much this can give you a happiness of more than that right this can give you more satisfaction right so you rank it on preference so higher the indifference curve higher the satisfaction so group of indifference curve we call it as what indifference map right we call it as indifference map right now we have some concept called as marginal rate of substitution what is marginal rate of substitution you saw here right he is willing to sacrifice six clothings for one food two clothings for in for one more extra food of it right this we call it as marginal rate of substitution in other words it's the rate at which i am will a consumer is willing to exchange one commodity or substitute one commodity for an other right that is what marginal rate of substitution means marginal rate is keep on falling marginal rate will keep on falling why see because i sacrifice what i have right that becomes more precious to me because i have lesses of it right when i have 100 chocolates i would not mind to give 10 chocolates to you to get one burger right but even i have only nine chocolates with me i will be a little bit stingy i'll be like hey i have only nine chocolates i'll give you three chocolates you give me one burger correct ah that is what because your satisfaction from the chocolate will be more because of consuming consuming these three that is why they say mrs will keep on falling as the consumer is lesser or uh, mean prepared to give lesser of these particular units right then we saw the formula also mux divided by mu y right And then we saw this is logic why it is we have already seen in the class what is the logic in detail logic is not going to be tested in the exam all right but you should know the logic which we have explained in the main class done property of indifference curve what are the properties of indifference curve downward slope to the right right it is convex what is convex means this is convex to the origin origin means this is the origin right why is it convex because marginal rate of substitution is there it is keep on following right that is why it is convex then for if it uh, one yes if it's perfect substitute then it will be a straight line right mrs will also be constant this is only case where mrs will be constant please note it down right underline it right indifference curve will be a straight line when it's perfect substitute and perfectly complementary perfectly complementary means what it will be l shaped curve indifference curve will be a l shaped curve we saw the logic behind it in the main class you left shoe and right shoe remember right we saw if i get one left shoe what uh, how many right shoe i have get i will get the same level satisfaction right if you don't remember the logic go and see the main class but from exam point of view l shape is more than enough right done and two in uh, two indifference curve will never intersect right two indifference curve will never intersect 
higher the indifference curve, higher the level of satisfaction. An indifference curve will never touch the axis. That is y axis or x axis. Because it is a combination of two goods. Right? Can never intersect each other. Right? We saw also why the logic. If you want the logic, see the main classes. Done. Then we came to budget line. We came to budget line. What is budget line? It is a line. Huh? Budget line is a line which represents right if i spend my entire income if i spend my entire income how how much commodities or what combination of commodities i can buy what combination of commodities i can buy that is called as a budget line let us see right in uh, budget line shows all the combination of two goods which the consumer can uh, by spending is given income on two goods at the given prices at the given prices right so the formula which is nothing but px price of one good into the quantities plus py into the quantity of the other should be less or equivalent to the budget right so you can take an example of apples and mangoes and give right if i had a budget of 100 I can let us say the price of mango is my mango is 10 rupees right and price of orange is uh, 20 rupees right if I had a budget of 100 rupees only there can let us say I can spend the entire money and buy mangoes how many mangoes I'll buy 10 right if I spend entire money I will get what 5 oranges right or a combination of both that is mangoes i can buy 50 mangoes ah no 40 four mangoes i'll buy ah yes four mangoes and i'll buy two no three ah yeah three oranges three oh, wait a second i'll buy three oranges right what did i do how did i get it this is the same formula and practically applied it they are giving it in the formula base that's all it is so all these combinations right i plot it onto a curve i brought plot it onto a curve this we call it as a budget line or another name is also called as price line another name is also called as price line now with below my budget line i can buy everything all the combinations right i can buy anything of these combination below the budget line but above the budget line can i buy anything no i can't buy anything above the budget line so h is beyond the budget k can i buy it on k yes i can buy k but i am underspending i am underspending my budget right so slope of the budget line we call it as price ratio that is equivalent to px by p why right done can you answer this particular question alone this we did it it's there in your back question also just wanted to know whether you are able to solve this if you know this this is more than enough tough question this is how much of ice cream and chocolate this is quantity of chocolate this is quantity of ice cream i have a budget of 900 what is this so what should be the quantity if i am spending or what they are asking is what is the price of these goods what is the price of these goods is what they are asking what is the answer answer is b 20 and 10 right because 45 ice creams right 45 into 20 that will be 900 or in other words 900 is my budget i am buying at 45 i am able to buy means 20 rupees here 900 divided by for chocolates 90 that should be 10 right this is what it is right more details on i would explain detail in this the exam i mean in the class but this should be more than enough for revision i hope you have got it right done now how does consumer attains equilibrium in this uh, indifference curve right we have our indifference map and we have our in uh, budget line right 
a consumer would want to be always at the highest indifference uh, curve, right? But he is always given a constraint. He has a budget, right? So this is the budget. So within the budget, what he can buy? He can buy IC3, IC2 and IC1, right? So where is the highest budget? He, uh, I mean, highest satisfaction he is going to get in IC3, which is nothing but tangent to the budget line. So he is going to spend the maximum amount and getting the, what to say, my maximum satisfaction, right? Because it's in theoretical format. They, see, some students have asked, sir, how, how, why is it always tangent? Normally it is tangent. In real world, it might not be necessary to be tangent, right? But because fractional division of the goods will not happen, right? But in theory, we are going to study it will be tangent only. Are we clear? So uh, he will spend the max all his money and try to get the maximum satisfaction, which is nothing but the tangent on the budget line. I see curve which is tangent to the budget line. In that tangency, what happens? Mux is equal to Px is equal to Muy by Py. Right? This is the formula which will also come. Done? That's for indifference curve equilibrium. Done. Indifference curve analysis is superior to utility analysis. Why? Because indifference curve does not talk about measurement of utility. Right? It is only about what is your preferences and it studies more than one product right indifference cover studies about two products so it is better right then it does not assume the constancy of marginal utility of money right so it does not assume of money itself so it does not con a constancy of money of marginal utility of money is not there and it segregates income effect and substitution effect Right, as I told you, this is not there in your portion, this is just a line. But you understood in price in demand, we studied rational behind uh, price effect. You studied no, that is income effect and substitution effect. So, in indifference curve, you can actually find what contributes to income effect, what contributes to substitution effect in a, in a graphical way. You can find which, which is which effect which is giving you right. Why is the consumers moving to the other commodity that is what they are trying to say in the last one so these are the four advantages of indifference curve right and that winds up your chapter for utility done done done, done. are we clear any questions any questions guys We'll take a five minutes break. Huh? Hmm? Time is 5.28. We'll continue at 5.35. Okay, just take a five minutes break. Just close your eyes and come out. We'll take a five minutes break and then continue. We'll give a main break at uh, after supply chapter. Okay, we will do it after. This is the last chapter. It's very much so. I started super power. And I thought, okay, not so hard.
What are you guys doing? And guys, when you are getting advice, no, get it from people who have studied and cleared the C foundation course. Yeah, just telling you, a lot of because sometimes you get influenced by your friends, peers, right? Study who have cleared the foundation or from your teachers. Don't listen to your friend who has not cleared the course or direct entry students, see, inter, right? Who have not written the course. I've seen many students listening to friends, right, and people who have not done the course and they have taken wrong direction, right, because we know the formula, we tell this is the formula to go, that's the formula to go, right, because we know what it is required, right, please do your RTP, MTP, fast questions, right, and study material questions, right. These are very very important. Last three attempts is enough. See more than more than this is not required. Right? If you have so much of excess time, then you can go for four to five attempts. Right? But if you do this question wise and you are able to solve it, more than good enough. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, yeah, can we start? Guys, can we start? All right, guys, so we will move on to now. Yeah, I'll give you one disclaimer here. Guys, just pause the video, take a break for two minutes, right? And then play this party next chapter, right? Done. And this supply. That's for recorder students instruction, not for you guys. Okay. Supply. What is supply? Opposite of demand. Right? Done. What is supply? It is the amount of goods and services that the producer is willing and able to offer at various prices during a given period of time. The offer for sale is the most important. What is sold is not important. Right? So, supply means what is offered for sale. No, don't say if only five, let's say 10 chairs are offered for sale, right? Then 10 is supply. Sold was only seven. Seven is not supply. Please take that in your head. Supply is also a flow concept. We studied what is a flow concept. Determinants of supply. What are determinants of supply? Price of the goods. What is price of the goods? Talk about. When price increase, supply will increase and vice versa will happen, right? Prices of related goods. There are two types of related goods. What are they? Complementary and substitute. What will happen when price of complementary goods increases? Supply increases. Right? What happens when the price of substitute goods increase? Supply 
decreases right supply decreases because price of complement uh, substitute goods are increasing means that becomes more profitable than your particular product so consumers suppliers will try to prefer to supply that than your own good right done and vice versa also will happen vice versa also will happen please keep in mind prices of factors of production what is factor of production means input cost right if cost increases what will happen to supply supply decreases all these things are connected to what profit if supply is nothing but profit increases i will be willing to supply more if profit is going to come down then i will supply less of that particular goods then technology is becoming better in that then supply will increase government policy favorable government policy should be there then supply will increase let's say i will give you subsidy right i'll give you support i'll uh, uh, reduce tax for you then you will produce more of it if i punish you i'll give custom duty every duty every tax i impose then you'll supply less of it right competition more the competition more the supply less the competition less the supply and other factors are also there in the determinants right then we saw law of supply what is law of supply says as price citrus paribus price increases supply increases then we saw supply schedule supply curve is nothing but plotting the supply schedule into the graph right what is it is it upward sloping curve yes it's a upward sloping curve is it the positive relationship yes it is a positive relationship right then we saw increase in supply and movement along the supply if price increases uh, or price changes we call as movement along the supply curve right if price increases what we show upward movement along the supply curve if price is reduced downward movement along the supply curve or expansion of supply when price increases contraction of supply when price decreases right here what do we talk about here when when the shift happen in supply when other factors change when other factors change that is leftward shift and rightward shift what is rightward shift means increase in supply leftward shift means decrease in supply please note both right means both are in, uh, in demand also rightward shift means increase only in supply also rightward shift means increase only right so when will supply increase and a favorable other condition changes favorable to increase in supply right that is why supply will increase then we saw elasticity of supply what is elasticity of supply delta q divided by delta p by p by q same formula only there is no change in formula right here instead of quantity in sub, uh, demand we call write it as quantity supplied all right then the diagrams comes as follow right perfectly inelastic supply what is perfectly inelastic supply means right irrespective of change in price <coughs> quantity supply remains same what is it quantity supplied remains same means what vertical or horizontal <coughs> it is vertical so e es is equal to zero one second guys so let's just take a break <coughs> getting old What's my age? Right, huh? Guess. Twenty-six. Sorry. I finished it when I was twenty-one. I started in the year, first year of my college. Hmm. 
Hmm? There are all tricks. That's it. There are tricks for these courses. That's all. The guy who understands the tricks will pass. The guy who doesn't understand the trick will not pass. Hmm? I told you no. What is required? Distraction free study what you have, go and write, you will pass with confidence. If you study 101 thing, pressure you day, it will not happen. At the exam day, you, how much pressure will be there? Too much of pressure will be there. With that pressure, you will not be able to even concentrate. And I understood this was tough. That's that is one thing which I had no intentions to prove that uh, I can score 100 out of 100. Yeah. And majority pe people who pass have accepted reality. Those guys are only the guys I, I appreciate. Uh, they are in the zone. Guys who don't appreciate that it's a very tough exam. Or uh, guys who are like Nah, we'll take it like a college exam. Will not happen. Or the way of studying should be radically different from your college exams and PUC. If you use the same formula which you studied for PUC here, it will not work. And that is where our education system has failed, right? The reason being is you guys have been embedded with 80, 90 in your PUC and think that masters of accounts. Right, I'm not taking it away from you guys, but in the sense that you guys have got a notion this is the way to study to score high marks, which is absolutely wrong. Right, when it comes to here, CA, it's about concepts, understanding, and writing the concept correctly. That is what it is. I have my friends who have scored beautiful marks and be, I mean, better marks than me in schools. And I am not clear in even the second level of professional course, right? Because it requires a different level of understanding, different level of application and writing the exam, right? Point wise of, you have to present your exams in point wise. I guess I sir would have told you, I would have told you, but still if I conduct an exam out of 100, 30% will write it paragraph wise. And I do not have an answer for it. Why? Because I cannot change what was thought. I, I understood that I cannot change or we cannot change what was thought 12 years. Right? From LKG to first 12th century, you have been thought in that way. And we cannot change it within 4 to 6 months. That I understood that. But, but the thing is here, you need to write point wise. You cannot write paragraphs. You cannot. Uh, you, it's not measuring rod. Uh, you have written this much. Five marks. All right. Don't write your college answers. That is when you will pass. Done. Thank you for the break. Done. Relatively less elastic demand. Or can we say it as inelastic supply? Sorry, in uh, relatively in uh, elastic, inelastic supply, right? What does that mean? Less than one. It is less than one. So if price changes by 10%, supply will change by less than 10%. That is 8%, 7%, right? Greater elastic supply. That is elastic supply, right? If supply price changes by 10%, supply will change by 15%, greater than 10 Unit elastic, we know what it is, perfectly elastic. At a particular price, I'll sell n number of units. Even a slight increase or decrease, I'll sell zero, right? That is what perfectly elastic supply is. Now, at point elasticity, we studied what is point elasticity. At a particular point, what is the elasticity? Arc elasticity between two points, right? Then we bought a concept of equilibrium price. What is equilibrium price? When? When demand is equal to supply, we call it as equilibrium price, right? This is the equilibrium point. Why do we call this as equilibrium point? 
right at this point everyone is selling and everyone is buying what has been sold right so whatever quantity is being sold that is 19 quantity is being sold at and 19 quantities is bought there is no excess or no less right if there is no excess and uh, no excess or deficit it's a good way because business have not produced too many and kept in stock right that is a wrong thing because cash has been stopped there if you excess produce and keep it nor it has not uh, produced less and not fulfill the demand right because you're losing the profit so at equilibrium price everything is being sold and it is also called as clearing price why it's called as clearing price market clearing price because everything market is clear right that's why it's called as market clearing price or price theory or market equilibrium right at this equilibrium point only both buyer and seller are satisfied that is also very important right so this is the equilibrium price if supply if price is more than supply is more than demand what will happen there will be surplus if there is surplus price will be reduced to the uh, what is it discounts will be provided to bring down the surplus right and go back to the equilibrium if price is less than uh, sorry demand is more than supply what will happen there will be a shortage then prices will be increased so that the shortage is removed right and back to the equilibrium only at equilibrium price nothing will move around it will be steady the prices will be steady then chapter 2 actually supply ends here okay chapter 2 supply ends here but chapter 4 chapter 4 unit 2 chapter 4 unit 2 price determination equilibrium price determination is there no that is what we are going to see what are we going to see when there is increase in demand right what happens what happens to the equilibrium when there is decrease in demand what happens when there is increase in supply what happens when decrease in supply what happens we are going to study we studied already when there is increase in demand what happens what happened to the equilibrium price right how do you get it right we draw a first supply curve right then we say demand curve is increasing demand curve is increasing right then we will point this was the previous equilibrium point right this was the previous equilibrium point that is price and quantity but due to the shift it has become new so what has happened prices also has increased quantity is also increased so here price has also increased quantity equilibrium price has also increased quantity is also increased when there is a decrease in demand what happens price decreases quantity decreases when shift in right uh, supply increases what happens supply increases what happens please tell me right let us see right this is the supply uh, demand curve right i increase it supply increases right what happens this is what is the supply before but the new supply curve has increased right so you see quantity increased but price decreased so quantity increased price decreased whereas su supply decreases to the shift, uh, left what happens price increases quantity decreases right all these things you should be knowing it properly if not also you can draw the diagram and find it out okay this is when individual things are happening what happens both are increasing both are decreasing right that is if let's say supply and demand is increasing what happens what happens please draw and let me know what will happen when supply and demand increases
Come on, guys. Tell me. When both increase, what happens? We know quantity increase for sure. But price is uncertain. Right? It depends upon the proportion of increase and decrease. Right? If you know the law, if you want to know the logic and all, please see the main video. If you are weak here, go back to the main video, see it fully. Right? This is a little bit important also. Right? Now, when supply and demand increases, what happens? Uh, demand decreases, what happens? We know quantity will decrease. Price is uncertain. Right? It depends upon which is decreasing more than what. Okay? Then that is what we can say. Now, second scenario. When supply is increasing, demand is decreasing. What can we say? Quantity is uncertain, but price will decrease. Price will decrease. Or supply decreases and demand increases. We can say quantity is uncertain, but price increases. Right? If you want to know the logic, please go and see the main video. Right? Now, I want you, to, I wanted you guys to answer this particular question. Please answer this particular question for me, right? Because I just wanted to test because I know this is a little bit confusing chapter or consu consuming for a concept which you would have forgotten. So I wanted you to do one sum. Can we do a sum? Please do it and tell me what happens. Draw it if you want to. Draw it if you want to, please. Everyone online also, please answer if possible. Forgot huh, this concept. Huh? Answer is, are you sure? What did I say? See, here in this case, supply and demand is increasing. So, quantity will increase, right? And price cannot be determined because they have not told anything, right? I want you to practice these three or uh, two questions also at your home so that you get an idea of things. Are we clear? And that ends the supply chapter and chapter 4 unit. Okay, that's it for this particular video. See you guys.